Uh, well, I have a special guest on the show with me today. His name is Firas Abdala. And hey, Paul, thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for for being here. It's it's great. Now you're you're usually in London, but you're in is it Lebanon today? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Lebanon is where I'm originally from, actually, and we are about to launch Cognizant, our product here in Lebanon, like on a on a wide scale it's going to be the first new tropic in the market so it's, it's quite a big deal and of course i'm also qu quite well connected because it's my my home country um see so i'm staying here for for a few months i don't really have a set deadline for when i go back to london or europe but for the time being i'm in lebanon yes fantastic and so okay it's 3 3 15 p.m here in, in hong kong what time is it in, in lebanon it's 9 13. Okay, so I didn't make you wake up uh, too early. No, 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 it was good. Actually, I, I thought you know, uh, like we'll, we'll roll with UK time, you know, because it's clear. I'm not gonna tell you, oh, I'm in Lebanon. It's two plus hours. I'll just roll with it. Right. <laughs> well, um, I want to tell you all a little bit about Ferris. Um, he's a bit of an oddball, according to him. So he's had his head, had he had his head properly tied onto his body after high school he would have most likely become a medical doctor, but fate had it that he ended up going to business school. Now he says that business education is easy and overrated. I, I, I uh, differ with that. I thought it was tough, but it was easy for him. Um, so he, that and combined with his curiosity meant that he had enough time on his hands to indulge in some of his other intellectual curiosities, which range from biology, nutrition, and nootropics all the way to philosophy and spirituality. And despite the apparent disparity in these interests, they can all be seen as different paths leading to optimization or to wholeness if one must use spiritual language. Now, it was Ferris who first saw the need for this natural, high-quality nootropic after he was searching the internet to buy such a product for himself, only to be disappointed with everything he saw. And he knew then that He'd have to take matters into his own hands. I've definitely had products like that where I just wish I could create my own. So uh, this is actually pretty inspirational to me. So Fierce is, you know, the founder of MX Nutraceuticals, and it's a supplement company with their current focus on a cognitive enhancing supplement they call Cognizant. And, you know, I'm one of those people, I think those of you that have been listening to my show for a while know I like to do lots of N equals one experiments. <laughs> I've tried a whole bunch of different supplements throughout the years uh, to maximize performance. And nowadays, yeah, I, I, yeah go ahead. I have, to, I have to tell your audience that Paul didn't just, you know, take the take cognizant from me. He grilled me on the questions, and I was happy with it. But he he was <laughs> he was you know um, like I would say he had, he had some health, healthy skepticism. Uh, he was curious and he, he knew his, his stuff basically. So he didn't just, you know, take it. Oh, that's cool. I have like a thread of 20 emails from him. I can show you. Anytime. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I didn't, when I was in my twenties, I may not have done my, my homework quite as well. It certainly wasn't as, as easy to, as the uh, internet was just barely alive in, in those days. This was pre Google. There was actually days okay, before wow. Google. Yeah, yeah. I'm an old guy. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I thought you were, okay. Well, I'm 26. I don't know if it, if it shows anywhere on the bio. How old are you, Paul? Uh, I am going to be 40 uh, in almost exactly a month, December 13th. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Old, old, well, old guy. Okay, well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so yeah. So as Ferris mentioned, a few months ago, he reached out to me about trying Cognizant. And I, I was a little skeptical at first. I wanted to do my homework. I wanted to check a few things out. And, you know, I've heard you know, I listen to a lot of different podcasts. I read a lot of research and I had actually seen and heard a lot of really good things about nootropics in general. So I was curious already, but I just wasn't sure about, you know, taking them myself. So as Ferris said, I did, I did grill them a little bit. I, I researched the ingredients that they use, which they do a nice job of explaining on the website. We'll talk about those in a little bit and everything looked great. There's no side effects that I could see, except for there was just a little bit of concern around Panex ginseng. Um, if you take it over a long period of time, and it's just questionable, we, they just don't know that much about it. Um, and so if you don't know about Panex ginseng, it's an adaptogen. Uh, Ferris can probably talk about it better than I can, but it's basically defined as adaptogens are basically non-toxic plants that help your body resist stressors. Uh, so physical, biological, and so on. These these types of stressors, it helps sort of resist that. So these herbs, yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and they've been using these for centuries in, you know, in Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine. So it's, they're, they're nothing new. And so, yep. you know, remember Ferris, he pointed me to the fact that with Cognizant, 
you know, you recommend that you take it for five days in a row and then you stop taking it for two consecutive days. So maybe Monday through Friday, you take it and then you stop taking it on Saturday and Sunday as, as an example. Exactly. And the reasoning behind that is two things. First, you don't build tolerance towards the ingredients of the product. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that way you guarantee that cognizant will be effective over the long term. And the second reason is of course, related to what you said. Now there are, there are not really uh, like, Panax ginseng hasn't been proven toxic uh, as far as I know, and I've done quite a bit of research. It, all it is is that they haven't really tested it over, over the very long term. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's anything with it. No, to, to con- because we want to take everything into consideration and to counter that, th- that's where the two-day break is also important because in two days, your body will be clear of all the, the cognizant ingredients, including ginseng. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, and that actually helps answer one of my questions that I have for you later that, that we'll bring up quickly. So, okay. so yeah, so you answered my questions really well. Um, and I was, I was ready to green light it, but I'll, I'll say I was pretty happy with, with my coffee. You know, I would drink my coffee. Yeah. I'm pretty regimented with my morning routine, you know, drinking coffee. I would take master pattern amino acids, uh, so I could, yeah. you know, train fasted and keep my nitrogen levels up. Uh, Did so you- yeah, go ahead. Did you take cognizant with your coffee or did you leave like two or three hours in between? Well, I actually, I had a, I have a whole bunch of different uh, scenarios that I'm going to, I'm going to share with you. And I, I really want to hear your take on, on how I did. I, I do too. I want to hear what, what happened. Okay. <laughs> so we'll leave, well, that's a teaser for everybody. We'll, we'll I'll definitely okay. want to save that for a second. <laughs> Uh, so, so just, you know, with my morning routine, I would, I do my morning workout typically get the kids to school on my walk home. I'm, you know, I'm dictating gratitude into my journal on Evernote. I'm talking about accomplishments, strategic direction. And so talking about productivity here, I, as soon as I get home, I, I sit down and I do the hardest thing. First rule, which is do the hardest thing of your day for the first 90 minutes and then do for output tasks and then later do the two minute rule for input tasks. So I'm really dialed in with productivity. And when you mm-hmm. started talk, talking about Cognizant and when I started researching the possibility of having more productivity, I really got excited about that. So uh, I was curious, I was definitely curious. And I wondered if, you know, one thing that happens with coffee, and I think a lot of people that drink coffee have experienced this, if you get just a little bit for, you know, past that line and it's kind of hard to find where that line is, you get kind of jittery. And, it, and you sort of, you lose that smooth energy effect and you sort of get into a place that's not very fun. And that's happened to me a few times. <clears throat> so I was yep. interested in that piece too, where I might be able to find something that'll help me have good energy and focus and productivity without getting all crazy jittery. So And, and how was it with Tommy's then? Did you find that like you got energetic without the jitters? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely get into, you know, the different scenarios, but I, I found yeah. that it, it was really, really good energy, but it was smooth and I didn't have like big spikes and drops like, like I get with coffee. So I, I think everybody's clear. There's panic, panics, ginseng as one of the key ingredients. There's six key ingredients in Cognizant, but I wanted you Ferris to just run through the list of the six ingredients and sort of what each one of them do and, and why you decided on those particular ones. Okay, well, okay, this is going to get technical. I hope it doesn't get too complex for, for the audio. Okay, oh, let's do it. We love it. We love it. Okay, awesome. So um, we've got the caffeine, which you've mentioned, and we've got L-theanine, and that's a type of amino acid usually present in green tea. Um, now, that, that's, that goes into effect almost immediately, like within 30 to 45 minutes. And what it does, so the caffeine is the energy booster. That that much is clear. Everyone knows about caffeine. Right. What L-theanine does is it smooths out the the jitters that might be caused by caffeine, without decreasing caffeine's energetic effect. If it makes sense. So it's like you keep the high without the you know the the uh, yeah the jitters like without without any extra anxiety. So okay. Annihilation of anxiety without decrease in energy. So it's not a sedative. Right. That, that much clear, yeah? Okay. But it doesn't only do that. What l also does is it gives you an added attention boost, which would not be present with either caffeine or l alone. So there's an, an added attention boost, which I think you probably came across in your research, which only comes when you combine caffeine and l Interesting. Okay. So the combination... 
that that yep. those two i think i've got some research that we'll share later in the in the show but those two are well researched as a as a combo theanine and, and caffeine right okay um perfect and let's so that that's that goes in the effect immediately and i will go into the adaptogen part which is the four uh adaptogen ingredients let me start by rhodiola rosea um so rhodiola rosea is probably you know before before i go into the specific in a separate ones i only chose uh, adaptogens well first i chose adapt, adapt, adaptogens because they have a very high safety profile and we've known them for many many you know centuries right um like for myself i wanted something extremely effective because i was disappointed in in what i thought was only uh, you know, caffeine-based nootropics. I think you probably mentioned that at, at some point in our correspondence. But I wanted something that really worked and the same, at the same time was really, really safe. As, as safe as my coffee, basically. Right, right. And yeah, that, that's why I chose adaptogens. And also the cool thing about adaptogens is that they don't just, you know, uh, operate, like they don't just do one thing. They, they, they do quite a few things mentally and physically and that's why they're called adaptogens so i thought that was like you know um like a huge part of of you know two plus two equals five this whole like synergy uh, <laughs> I like mental that. And, yeah so I'll, I'll go into the specific adaptogens now uh, radiola rosea is also called the arctic root and um by, by the way paul you know there's actually a way for you to to follow up like specifically on what i'm saying have you heard of examine.com Yes. Okay. So you can type uh, into Google rhodiolarosiaexamen.com and then you can check the, the studies as I talk about it if, if you'd like to. I don't know how, how practical it is. Um, well, so uh, the Rodeola, Rodeola, I'll just yeah, say, sorry, Furious. I'll just, I'll, I'll add um, in our show notes and in the blog, um, all okay. the things that we uh, talk about today so people can easily uh, click on it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So Rodiola rosea has uh, quite a few clinical studies. You know, it's, it's proven that it's a very effective anti-fatigue. Um, and that's both physical and mental fatigue. So what it does is it makes you feel less physically fat, you know, tired. But at the same time, it uh, preserves your mental performance under conditions of extreme tiredness and fatigue. Uh, so the, the, that's how the Rodiola rosea cognition effect takes place. It, it um, um, like you would really feel it if you were tired or underslept. Then the Rodiola rosea would, would like have an even stronger effect. And uh, be a, like uh, so, we've got the anti fatigue, the physical and the mental, but also it's a mood booster. It's pro serotonergic, and it's also been proven to increase serotonin in the brain. Um, so I think now you're getting the pattern of how, how each of these ingredients will have more than one, one benefit. And we've uh, like to, to, like, these are the main radiola rosea benefits to move over to Panax ginseng. Panax ginseng is, as you mentioned, a tonic, uh, it's, it's, you know, it boosts your energy, but it doesn't do it the same way caffeine does it. Uh, ginseng, ginseng's energy boost is actually significantly longer lasting. So where caffeine lasts for about four to six hours uh, on average, ginseng would last more like 10 hours. And um, it, it's it's more, su you know, it's subtler. It's, it's a, you don't, you might be able to feel it, you might not. It depends on how, how aware you are of your uh, physical state. But the, it also ties in with rhodiola rosea in defeating fatigue. So now you've got an anti-fatigue synergy between rhodiola rosea and the next ginseng. Um, so are, are you following like the picture I'm painting here? Yes, I, I am. And I, you know, I think it, it's making sense now why you get the sort of, I almost would call it like a, a mild buzz type of a feeling. I, I can't think of another way to describe it. Like you just have this smooth energy feeling. You don't feel tired. You don't feel fatigued. Uh, and, and, and I want to talk about this in a little bit too. Like I noticed even, uh, on my off days, like the day yeah. after I took it, I still sort of felt that a little bit. I don't know if it was placebo or not, or if there's evidence of that happening to other people, but it's, yeah, it's, as you say, it's, it's, it's subtle, but that combined with the, the caffeine, it really seemed, at least in my experience to make, make it feel really level and, and not too much, but, but certainly noticeable. 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. Th that's the like intention behind it. Um, and then we've got. Um, I'm gonna go to the easier one because I'm gonna go to Jinko Biloba now. And uh, Jinko Biloba, it, its main effect is increasing blood flow and specifically blood flow to your brain. Although it will do, it will increase blood flow in your body in general. And I think you felt. Um, did, did you feel any like so sometimes any tingling anywhere in your in your feet or arms? Uh, I felt tingling actually in my in my uh, arms and in my throat, especially for some reason. Okay, cool. Well, that, that's that's you know blood flow. That, that's increased blood flow basically. Like for example, when I was first testing it a long time ago, I had a, a cousin who felt you know a bit numb in, in her foot in like in very cold uh, weather and in, in like you know the hard deep winter. And one of the first things she noticed when she took cognizant is that I actually I feel you know more blood flowing through my legs, um, and, I, and I knew right away it was the ginkgo. Um, so the ginkgo's um, the ginkgo a ginkgo has sorry the ginkgo sometimes I spell it ginkgo the ginkgo has two main benefits one is increased blood flow to the brain and the other and I've got a I've got a double blind placebo study on, on the effect I'm about to mention right now is when you combine it with a panax ginseng it increases memory by approximately 7.5 percent over the course of three months. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you, and, and, what's yeah, the source the, of that study, Ferris? Um, I, I, can, I can send it to you by, uh, I think I have it on my How It Works page, but I can send it to you. Uh, actually, let, let me try to send it right now. Yeah, we'll just include it in the in the show notes and, and blog for everybody. Uh, one, one sec. So, uh, and the cool thing actually was that when they tested it, they found out that um, they had one test point two weeks after they stopped supplementation, all right? So this was two weeks after. And they realized that most of the benefit was still there. So that was really big for them. For the oh, scientists. yeah, that's huge. Uh, let me see. Where's the instant messaging? Hmm. All right, I'll send it to you, like, like right you know, towards the finish, because I can't find it right now. Yeah, yeah, but no it, worries. It should, it should also be on the How It Works page. Okay. Uh, but the, um, the cool thing is that it wasn't the only study. The study was done to replicate uh, like a previous positive study. So this was a confirmation. And, you know, a double blind placebo study is as, as you know, sophisticated and accurate as it can get. Absolutely. Um, so that's, that's the Jinko Biloba. Now, the ashwagandha, which is the last uh, of the adaptogens. Ashwagandha is mainly an anti-stress adaptogen. So how to put it? So it it can. So there is a, like a, a stress resilience uh, effect, which also um, goes uh, in synergy with with like the the stress resilience effect of the other adaptogens. I, all three have it actually in different proportions. I think Rhodiola rosea is probably the the uh, along with ashwagandha. They're the strongest stress resilience uh, factors. Um, but ash ashwagandha is the is the strongest anti-stress and anti-anxiety uh, ingredient in cognizant. So this probably also guaranteed that you don't feel absolutely any jitters from from the caffeine or, for, or like, you know, the combination of caffeine and ginseng. And it adds to the uh, uh, stress resilience uh, effect combined with the other adaptogens. And it also has some neuroprotective benefits which is something it has in synergy with Ginkgo biloba because, you know, increased blood flow will ha um, has, does have a neuroprotective effect because Ginkgo is also an antioxidant. So it's, uh, th that's, I think, the, the big picture in general. So you can see how, how different elements tie into each other in several ways. That's why I was, I was a bit like, oh, wow, that, that's a lot to talk about in, in detail. <laughs> um, no, I appreciate uh, that. And, and actually, I want to dig just a, a little bit deeper because... You know, I always say, you know, learn new things. Don't be closed minded, be open minded, try new things. So I'm guessing that you and I always say, you know, try to take one percent from from everybody and take what you like, throw it against the wall, see what sticks. So you must have been trying different products and seeing what supplements you liked and what what uh, ingredients they had that you liked and ones that you didn't like. And what was the process for you like of coming down to these final six ingredients and, and, you know, coming to what Cognizant's final uh, formula was. Yeah. Okay. 
so mo most of these ingredients I had tried individually before, you know, as an Atropex amateur or uh, enthusiast. Oh, so um, you, so, sorry. So you actually were able to get these. Yeah, I guess that's probably not that difficult to get these in individual form and just sort of see what, what uh, reaction you had to each one. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're quite popular, but most of them. So you can get them in, in, uh, separately, uh, for sure. It, it might be a bit difficult because, like, um, some manufacturers are a bit careless with the with the specifications. So, like, if you look at the ingredients I have in Cognizant, they have, you know, I've, I've got, like, a very detailed specifications next to the ingredient name. And that, that's very important because if, if the specification is wrong or off, then it, it's not going to be... Like I use the same specifications of the ingredients that were used in clinical studies. Otherwise, I can't really predict how they're gonna they're gonna act. Right, right. Yeah, you don't want any extra variables that you don't need. Yeah, no, no extra variables, and not just that. Like if the specification specification is off, it might not work at all. Like like it's it's too big a risk. So I I use like exactly you know spot on down to the very last like milligram what the what the uh, standardized extracts. Uh, used in the clinical studies were like you know that that was a must for me and uh, I I, um, I think that that's gonna you can ask me now about like how we ensure that so I was a bit tough with my manufacturer about getting uh, like I want to see their certificate of analysis to be you know a hundred percent what I got like not not any kind of like no variation was acceptable basically right right um, but but sorry I, I was I'm I'm the uh, we're going on a tangent. Okay. <laughs> so how, how I did it. So I had this like practical experience, um, you know, as, as someone who's been in the industry as an amateur, let's say. And then I had, I teamed up with Greg, who's the resident scientist, as I say, and in, in, in the company. So Greg is, uh, all, you know, he's almost towards the end of finishing his PhD in biochemistry. And he was also an entropic enthusiast in his own right. So that was before we even met. Um, so we teamed up, and I have, I'd say we can divide the, the 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 whole process into three stages of how we came up with Cognizant. The first part was let's go academic research, okay? And uh, for that we we wanted to choose ingredients uh, which were which, like I said have a really high safety profile, which is why we picked adaptogens as our main you know core ingredients. And then we pick the adaptogens, which have a very high um, uh, effectiveness, you know, proven, uh, proven effective effects, which you will be able to see for yourself if you go to examine.com, which for, for the viewers who don't know, examine.com is kind of like, um, um, and uh, it aggregates the different studies on ingredients. So you can, you can basically see all the studies in one place. That's what examine.com does. So it's a shortcut for you guys to go check it yourselves. That's a good so, resource. Thanks, Ferris. Of course. So we picked ingredients which we know are very safe and are very effective. And we, we did that through lots of research. That was phase one. Phase two was we actually um, dig, dug a lot, like, like you dug very deep into the different forums of nootropics, which is like the nootropics group on Facebook, the nootropics subreddit, and the longevity nootropics uh, forum, and this might sound a bit off for some people, but actually this was really important because um, some ingredients appear to be safe on paper, but have unexpected side effects in practice. And I can mention a few if you'd like. Yes, yes, that'd be good for okay. for us to know for those that might be taking something that has that in it. Okay, so for example, alpha GPC, you know, which is a form of choline. Have you heard of it? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that that's actually been that has a few studies behind it, and it's it's to some degree you know proven on paper, um, and it's it's thought to be safe on paper as well. But if you go and and dig you know dig through the forums and like the the self-reported you know anecdotal experience as I call it, anecdotal feedback or anecdotal reports, you'd find out dozens and dozens of cases where people become severely uh, depressed and fatigued from taking alpha-GPC. Wow. But not, not only alpha-GPC, also it happens with uh, CDP choline, which is another choline source, similar to alpha-GPC. And um, the reason seems to be, you know, too much choline in the brain. And um, 
it's it's not well known, you know, on on, on like uh, in the um, in the science field that this can happen, but it, it it has happened like a lot. I mean, you can any one of you guys can now go onto Google, just write um, Reddit colon fatigue or depression and see what comes up. You're gonna go through dozens and dozens. I don't know if there's a hundred of uh, hundreds of them also. I don't know, but it it can happen. A uh, similar thing happens with Bacopa monieri. Have you heard of it, Will? No, I'm not familiar with that one. Okay, so Bacopa monieri is actually uh, probably the strongest natural nootropic. It it's, it uh, it has a proven memory increase of of 13 percent, I think, over 12 weeks, which is really high. Um, is that in a healthy adult, or is that in like a? Um, uh, I know no, healthy. It's healthy. healthy. Okay. Yeah, healthy and it's also it's also an adaptogen, Bacopa monieri. Um, so it's it's not very different from what I you know from what we have in cognizant. But the problem with Bacopa monieri is you'll also find many many reports of well, it's it's a similar thing with choline but a bit different. So people some people uh, report uh, lethargy and complete lack of motivation after using Bacopa for a few days. Wow! Some even from the first time. Yeah, you don't want so that. For, yeah, no, for real. Like, <laughs> I'm not making this up, guys. You you Google Bacopa Monieri lethargy and then see what happens. So, uh, so and, and that, because I, you know, like if I look on the paper, like I want to use alpha GPC. I want to use Bacopa Monieri. You know, I want to like find the way to to connect it to the other ingredients in, in my product. But after looking at that, I decided that, okay, they look great on paper, but I'm not taking the risk. You know, I don't want anyone to take my product and then feel lethargic or depressed or or fatigued so was a no no like even though i got criticized uh, by uh, for it by some some websites uh, who who review the tropics but you know i i had my reasons i don't think we understand the cholinergic system in the brain well enough to use these ingredients um yeah i mean who wants to have that boost of memory uh, to and have to sacrifice you know <laughs> being depressed or one hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so those are the first two stages. You know, stage one is academic, you know, thorough academic research. Stage two is digging through anecdotal reports, and stage three, of course, is experimentation. And that's where we test the the product or, or like a sample of it, but this, you know, exact same. So basically, cognizant without the the label, it's just a bottle of of, of you know like 10 bottles of pills in them. And I tested them on my friend, you know, Greg, my business partner, family, friends, like whoever. I, I tested all over the place. And um, when I saw it was effective, not only effective, but effective in the way we wanted it to be effective and without any significant side effects, uh, I was actually, that's it. Like funny enough, we got it right from the first time. We didn't really adjust. Like our uh, testing stack was exactly what we ended up putting in in, in the you know commercial product wow that, that means you guys did a great job on your homework and self-experimentation first before you ended up going with that yeah. that's great well that yeah, yeah that was actually very good news for us because you know um like changing like any change you'd have to see how the change affects all the other ingredients and then you'd have to test it again and that would be lots of delay so that was there was a bit of luck in that i would say Absolutely. And you, you told me before we started uh, recording, Fira, so you, uh, this surprised me with how great the quality uh, of your product is and your website and everything. Uh, so June or J July of, of 18, 2018, you actually officially launched, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Like, I mean, I would, I remember, um, I was, I was sending out bottles in the second week of June to, um, to like you know, uh, you know, nootropics experts who review the different stacks on their websites. So that I think like in mid June was when the website became actually functional. But we hadn't done absolutely anything at the time. So I would say like realistically, it was July when we began. Yeah, it's that uh, you know you were taking the cognizant, you were extra productive and got it uh, got it <laughs> done quickly, right? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Like, uh, I, like it does have it does give me that. I don't know if if you. Uh, because I haven't had many people who have mentioned this specific uh, effect of cognizant. I don't know if, it, if, I'm, if it's maybe because I'm extra aware of how it can affect me because you know, I'm the one who did it. But I do. I, I did get only one other customer who, who gave me this exact feedback. That day, 
I, I feel that they make me uh, quite goal oriented. Sometimes a bit too goal oriented. So I, be, I become like a goal finishing machine. Like if you give me a to do list and I'm on, I'm on cognizant, I'll just go like um, uh, you know, it's like excessive goal orientation. Some, sometimes it's excessive, even I think. Yeah. Well, I guess I you can't really test that on me specifically. Although I'll talk to to productivity here in a little bit on cognizant i i'm built that way i'm wired that way if you will i you know i really i really like productivity i like spreadsheets i like lists and checking things off lists and that sort of stuff but i will say that um my ability to stay focused on task was definitely definitely heightened but i don't want to get off topic before we move on so yeah, sure. your, your phases of implementation you said you did the academic component of it you did the testing on yourselves and then testing with your family and then other uh, nootropic experts does that was that all your phases of uh, uh no, preparation? no there, there was the one the one right after the academic research which was the uh, digging digging through the anecdotal reports on the different uh popular nootropics right? oh yes i'm sorry yes thank you thank you well it was a big deal because you know you, you like i want to see how it actually works in practice and i, I want to hear from the gu- hundreds of guys who've tried it yeah yeah a huge part of of preparation before implementation definitely Totally. Well, I'll quickly talk about my experience with okay. it. And yeah, so this is the, this is, I'm getting the whole, you're going to tell us about the different, you know, trying cognizant in different situations now, right? Yes. Yes. This is what my cliffhanger was before. So very cool. drum roll and excitement here. All right. <laughs> so, so I played around with different times a day and I remember actually asked you a question partway through cause I was, I was wondering about this. So I tried it. Um, one time I took it later in the afternoon. Um, I don't know why I think I wanted to drink my coffee in the morning and then, um, take it like later in the afternoon just to see how I would respond to, to both. Um, and I, I remember I shot you an email shortly after that and I said, uh, I felt like good energy, but I couldn't sleep very well that night. And you're like, yeah, dummy, you don't take it, you know, that late in the afternoon, <laughs> something to that effect. Well, I, I actually have, I'm certain I didn't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have to say like, uh, you know, this is like, there is a factual bit there. Is that yeah? You definitely shouldn't take it like any later than than one or two p.m. And in fact, it's better if you take it before twelve p.m., like very soon after you wake up. But there have been a few cases, and this is one of the side effects which I'm gonna declare. You know, it's real. I'm not gonna deny it. I've I've done the the math bit, and there is a one over eleven uh, chance that even if you take it in the morning, it's gonna affect your sleep. Right. Okay. Well, I'll say, yeah. I'll say after you, you know, recommended that I take it earlier in the day, um, I was totally fine. Um, okay. so I did another situation where I took it early in the morning instead of coffee, just to see if it would replace my coffee. So, you know, I usually, um, on my workout mornings, uh, when I'm not teaching one of my classes, I will get up at four 30 and then, um, I'll usually be having coffee at like 10 till five, uh, with amino acids. And then I'm out the door. Um, so I, I totally did it by itself one time and I felt fine. Uh, and then I took it with the amino acids and I, I didn't anticipate there would be any problem there. And, and, and there was, and I just wanted to try them sort of independently. Um, one morning I took it instead of coffee, uh, as I said, and I was wondering how it would affect me during my workout. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I don't know if it was placebo or not. But, uh, I felt a little bit nervous, but I'm kind of a, when I'm out on the road exercising, I can be a little bit nervous and my heart rate spikes up and down, but this is interesting. I felt a little bit nervous, but my heart rate was lower than normal. I watch my heart rate really closely when I, when I cycle and run, I want run. Um, so anecdotal, I know, but I thought that was interesting. Um, no, yeah, there wasn't placebo for sure. It was the ashwagandha and the rhodiola was, it was basically the adaptogens doing their work. So, so what would normally make my heart rate say spike up to 165 or 170 over my threshold, the yeah. adaptogens were helping me sort of calm down. Well, uh, not, not only that, actually, it, it, it's also, it's partly uh, the ginkgo biloba as well, because increased blood flow would mean that your heart doesn't have to work as much to give, to deliver oxygen to your different body parts. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, what... That's, that's, 
Sorry, said, that's why some some like uh, elite athletes take beetroot juice like uh, as a pre workout before they do their their intense workout because that's what it does. Yeah, oxygenation. Yes. Yeah. I, so you and I are going to have to build a a workout supplement together. That'll be fun. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. for it. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to mention on this particular situation too. So again, no coffee on this day. Took my cognizant in the morning. Worked out with it. I was still able to take an afternoon nap which I thought was really cool. So I took it at, you know, 10 till five or five in the morning or whatever. And then I took a nap at at 1 PM, totally fine. So I thought that was pretty cool. Another day I took it early in the morning instead of coffee before cycling. Um, So again, around five o'clock in the morning. And then I waited three hours and Mm. because I love coffee, I had some coffee and I felt fine. Totally fine. I still felt like I had good, smooth energy. I didn't drink a ton. I didn't have have like four cups. I think I just sort of sipped on maybe a cup or cup and a half of coffee, nothing major, but felt fine. Mm -hmm. Um, And then another day I took this uh, Cognizant. I took it. I had coffee in the morning like I normally would. So early in the morning at about five, I took Cognizant in the mid morning. um, So probably 830 or nine in the morning. um, Mm -hmm. So four hours later. And then I felt okay. Um, and actually I really liked this for me because then I felt really, really good during the productivity tasks that I was talking about earlier. So I do this first 90 rule where hardest thing of the day, what is it? Output task, sit down, go 90 minutes, boom. And I felt really, really focused. Like a lot of times I have to, I I mean, I have to keep my phone out of my room. I have to keep my email closed. (laughs) Like I really, really have to work hard to focus. And on that particular day, when I did this, it was easier for me to get in a rhythm and just stay, stay focused on, on my task and, and check things off. So it was cool. Yeah. I think that relates to what I was talking about. Like one of the effects it has on me also with like the goal orientation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree. That sounds like the same thing. Yeah, so, that is, I think. So for me, but, I think that is what, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this, but for me still having my little half cup of coffee before I work out, then wait three hours and then take Cognizant right as I'm getting started to hit my work productivity part of the day. Felt like the best hack, that's biohack, perfect. if you will. No, no, that, that, that's perfect. Three hours between Cognizant and the coffee. I totally agree. That's, that's perfect. That's good. Like I, I have, you have my, my stamp of, of approval. That's good. <laughs> cool. No, no, that's good. You know, what was interesting to me too is this seemed again placebo i don't know but it felt like it hits my bloodstream in like five minutes i mean really really fast faster than coffee for sure um no actually it's it's um okay so that within five minutes that's that's probably the caffeine inside cognizant but because it's dehydrated caffeine it gets absorbed faster than than regular coffee interesting and how long for like the entire ingredients list to really make it into your system would you reckon um, by an hour, they should all, all the guys should be should be working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So Definitely if you take it hour. strategically, then I probably should take it if I want to start work. Um, you know, at eight in the morning, maybe try to take it closer to seven to have it kick in. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. That's, okay. that's that would work for sure. And I already, t- I just wanted to sort of summarize my feeling of it. I, I think I did this already, but just quickly again, it's fe- it felt s- like smooth energy. I didn't feel twitchy. I had a clear mind. It kicked in quick. It, I really liked it when I was doing my output productivity tasks. It gave me sort of a good mental focus uh, when I worked on the computer, but also with clients. I, I work individually with clients, for personal training and, you know, in group fitness class situations. I felt good energy for that. Um, even doing presentations, it, it felt really good for, I, I took some today and I'm hopefully sounding energetic while I podcast. Um, uh, you are, you are. So, so <laughs> it, it helps you go into a flow state. Yeah. For, like it makes it easier. Yes. Okay. Uh, awesome. What, one other thing I wanted to, to ask you about it. I don't know if you meditate or not. I was interested on how Cognizant would affect my meditation. I don't m- meditate as much as I should, but I do practice it. A few times a week. Yeah. I need to get better. I need to get every day. Um, well, yeah. Sorry. You know, if, if we're gonna talk about meditation, it's gonna it's gonna be a whole other episode because like that that's I am so deep into that I can't even begin. Okay. Um, well, let's let's share notes. So I was thinking it was either gonna be <laughs> one or the other. I thought it was gonna either be harder 
because of the yeah. in energy, or I thought it was going to be easier because of the adaptogens and being able to, to block stress out. Um, so I felt just normal. I didn't really feel one way or the other, like I was able to, to concentrate more, but I, as I said, I'm not consistent and I struggle with meditation a little bit. So that might be more yeah. me than the product, but it didn't, didn't hinder or help me really. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, no, for me, it, it, it made it like it was very clear that I can double or yeah, even more, a bit more than that. Like, uh, you know, I can dramatically increase my uh, meditation time because usually like whatever, you know, regardless of what time I meditate, um, I can't really like if I go above, say, 25 or 30 minutes, I start to, you know, get drowsy. And by drowsy, I mean, like, I'm, I'm about to start nodding off. Um, like, you know, getting sleepy. But but with, I, I tried it, I think I was, I, was, I did it for an hour. When, like, uh, wow. you know, when I really wanted to see how long. Yeah, because, like, you, fatigue is gone. And that's that's the only thing that, that um, stops me from, from meditating usually. Uh, like, when I tried it at the time. So, because of, you know, this energy boost and, like, annihilation of all fatigue uh, I, I could just you know stay for for way longer than i usually can um sorry so you're meditating 30 or 40 minutes a session are you doing this daily uh th well i was doing that at the time to be honest but i don't i don't meditate anymore and it's not because i don't value meditation it's the opposite it's because i now um well if, um I mean, it's not an accurate description, but I would say I'm pretty much meditating all the time now. Oh, like, interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, like, like I said, it, it would probably take an, a whole other episode, but I, at some point, like I was I was so into meditation, um, like I studied and practiced Eastern spirituality for like for like four years in depth. And I, like I get, you know, this is part of the curiosity as well. Like I get obsessive when I'm into something. So I really, really went quite deep at the time. And I can't really explain it. Like, I don't know what happened exactly. But at some point, I realized that I had the ability without any technique, without any method to just stop thinking whenever I want to, which was, you know, life changing. But uh, you asked me how I did it. I don't know, to be honest. Well, I, I think I can appreciate what you're saying, um, just based on my limited experience with with meditation. So let me let me take a crack at it. So and doing 30 or 40 minutes building up to that sounds amazing to me because I, I really have to work hard for 10. No. <laughs> so, but, but when I do a good job on it, um, yeah. one of the best ways I've heard it explained, I think it was on Headspace was it, when you're meditating, you're almost like the world is traffic and you're standing on the side of the road and a car drives by and that's anger. And another car drives by and that's sadness and another car drives by and that's excitement. And if you're not in a meditative state, you get in the car for a ride and you go through that whole journey of anger or sadness or excitement or whatever. When you're meditating properly, you can notice those things, but you don't get on for the ride. You just sort of let them pass you by. And so it sounds like you've done such amazing work with meditation. Maybe you you can almost be in that transcendental state all the time where you're just letting things wash over you but not not yeah. letting them affect you yeah yeah like i really like like you know i've, I've tried to figure you know i've tried to reverse engineer like what exactly happened but i i don't know maybe maybe it's that we can all do it and i just suddenly realized that i can i don't know but you know because i've tried i've tried all the like in my you know back in the day i've, I've tried all the techniques and i've, I've you know i experimented with lots of things but then like I said today, I realized that, uh, which is what actually most of the, like, you know, the gurus basically talk that, you know, you know, you should um, be able to do after a while is, you know, no technique, no method. It's just Zen at, at uh, you know, and at Zen at any time you want, basically. But to, to go to comment in your description. So I totally agree. Um, I mean, I don't know. Do you label your emotions when you meditate? No, no, I, you know, mine's pretty, pretty generic, but I, I'm okay. willing to learn. Okay. Uh, no, but like, because some people think that labeling, you know, even some experts advise that you label the emotions you feel, but I, I don't think that's, that's productive if you want to be, get into meditative state. Um, because meditation is actually, is actually the opposite of that. It's completely, you know, it's not labeling anything, anything whatsoever. And like you said, it's, you become 
you know the witness of of your thoughts and emotions and you know the, the content of your mind basically and uh, the, w of course um, a natural um, consequence of that is that you become completely detached of what's going on so it's like it's like you are watching your thoughts and emotions in third person point of view yes that yeah. makes total sense and that i think that just must take a lot of practice and focus to to get to that point the, um I, I don't know man. like i i'm not sure it, it, it would i mean for sure you would um maybe maybe it would, the, the point of the practice would be so that you you know because it's, it would be something very new to you so you need time to get used to it but and, and maybe time to to for it not to become so new and like you know so you don't feel threatened by it but i think as an ability itself, uh, I mean, theoretically, it really shouldn't take a lot of time. I mean, I'm just thinking of it as I speak right now. Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. Thank you for sharing. I'm, I'm inspired to continue to keep, you know, going on that journey and, and get better. For sure. Like, like just, just as a, I mean, I know you have the apps and different, um, uh, you know, sources for learning meditation. But if you want to try, like when you do your meditation session for 10 or 20 minutes, just sit. Uh, you know, you, well, you can't stand, but I mean, I'm just assuming you sit down. Um, yeah, like remain as the watcher of, of you know, the, the thought stream. And then, um, of course, between two consecutive thoughts, you're going to realize that there's a gap of no thought, as it's sometimes called. Uh, but yeah, the trick is just don't don't follow the thoughts. And that that's all, you know, you don't need to do anything, basically. You don't need to concentrate on anything. Just... Uh, well, it's it's basically yeah. You you just sit and do nothing. Concentrate I mean, wanna... on uh, concentrate on not concentrating, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. Well, no, mm -hmm. it, it's it, it does it's uh you know that's one way of putting it. Real quick, um, talking about a couple last things with with cognizant before we move mm -hmm. on. Um, so thinking about different ways to to take it, um. I was thinking, you know, I guess this is sort of shallow and <laughs> not everybody might be worried about this, but every once in a while I'll, um, I'll whiten my teeth. And, you know, when you're whitening your teeth, you don't want to have drink coffee and red wine or it's just going to mess up the whole process. So yeah. I was thinking that actually would be a really good time to, to take Cognizant too. Like if you're eliminating coffee for a couple of weeks while you white your teeth, you could, you could have Cognizant then and still have really good energy. <laughs> yep. For sure, I should have it. So, uh, and, but you know, somewhere in the marketing pitch, that might be useful for some customers. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then something else too. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I noticed some effects of it. Maybe it's placebo, maybe it's not, but some effects, especially the day after I would take it. So I would take it the five days in a row, like you recommended. Maybe it was mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, Saturday. Don't take it, and I would still sort of feel that like buzzy, smooth energy kind of feeling. Um, even on the day that I didn't take it, have you noticed that at all, or is that just me? No, no, it can like the, some of the adaptogens can can be long lasting and they do accumulate for sure. So, like let's say the last day you took it was Friday. On Saturday, you would still feel feel quite a bit of the effects, but it would take until Sunday for it to completely clear out. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, and I know s some of the claims with nootropics um, are include memory. I, I, I talked about productivity a lot, um, and energy, uh, which without question were things that I noticed. I didn't notice too much about memory, but I didn't really specifically mm -hmm. test it to be fair. So I wasn't yeah. like, you know, doing a memory test and trying to make myself remember anything. I can just say that I was really productive when I took it and yeah. I had, I had good energy. Um, well, uh, to, yeah, to, to kind of like clarify that point, I mean, the most that you get the memory boost that you can get with cognizant like this is the top is 7.5 percent and although that's that's good that's you know usually like statistically five percent is the point of significance like mm -hmm. any variable you need like a, uh anything you know more, more like five per five percent is the threshold of significance usually so with 7.5 percent it can go up to eight point something you're talking about two or three percent above the threshold of significance. So there is a memory benefit and it's, it's proven cl clinically, I mean, at least in, in, on the ingredients themselves, which are used in Cognizant. But uh, like we have to admit, it's not really, you know, 7.5% is not a major boost. 
Well, I'll, I'll try it again uh, next time and I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll do a flash car test or something to, to see if I'm part of that 7%. <laughs> awesome. Well, do it. I mean, I should send you a few more bottles because like um, the, the soonest it it would work uh, with the memory benefit is uh, four weeks actually. And oh, the, and the, I see. Interesting. Okay. So it's got to yeah, build the, up in your system a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So the, that's another thing with kidneys and is that different effects have different timelines basically. So the energy you'd feel, you know, right away within like half an hour or 40 minutes stops the uh, same thing for the focus or like, not all the focus, but, but at least, you know, half the focus benefit would be in within an hour, which is like the caffeine alphanine. And then the rest of the focus and the mood uh, would come from the adaptogens. So you'd feel quite a bit of that on the first day, but it would take until the second or third day for the accumulation uh, of adaptogens to, to really make it kick in. And then the longest timeline is of course for the memory effect, which would start, uh, you know, it would begin after one month. Interesting. Okay. That's good to know. Um, all right. So we heard my crazy little scenarios and, and how, how I used it and, and found it helpful. I want to know from the man himself. So Ferris, how do you personally use Cognizant yeah. and, and, and what have your results been? Yeah. Okay. So I think I, I briefly touched on that earlier with the, with the goal, you know, like the, the goal oriented mentality, but mm -hmm. I, I use it the way you, you use it as well, which is how I, I describe it on the bottle, you know, that the same guideline, which is three pills to get a day, no, three pills, three capsules together at the same time in the morning uh, for five consecutive days, which is Monday to Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, you, you basically cycle it off. You stop taking it. And for me, I definitely feel the, the energy. And uh, I feel it without any jitters. So that's as intended. I, 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 and I, you know, to say a bit about my own individual genetic makeup, if I drink too much coffee, I can also become a bit nervous. So, um, uh, so it's good, you know, that I, well, it's, well, you know, during testing, it was further confirmation for me at the time that I didn't feel any jitters with Cognizant. And I feel, I feel more focused. And this is, uh, I briefly touched on it earlier when I said that it makes me more goal oriented. Uh, so like I, I really, uh, you know, stick to what I have to do. I mean, uh, because usually on a personal level, I, I switch. So sometimes I like to be focused. Sometimes I like to leave myself free flowing. And the free flowing part is more when I'm trying to come up with something new rather than being, uh, you know, going into execution mode. So it's... Um, I find Cognizant really useful for execution mode, basically. Um, and then we've got the mood. The and the, the mood uh, effect mostly comes to me in terms of like um, stress resilience. So let's say a sudden stressful situation happens. Like I'm not talking about something bothering. I'm, I'm talking about like something happened on the spot, you know, in business or personal or like, uh, um, you know, like the car breaking down or something sudden like that, I realized that my stress reaction is calmer and more contained. So um, my my bodily response to the stressor is less than it usually is, if it makes sense. Yeah, so I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm more in control uh, in the midst of acute stress, let's put it that way, because I mean, I'm, I'm using yeah. acute stress to describe like sudden, sudden um, you know, uh, I don't know if dangerous is the right word, but yeah, like su sudden stressful situations. Um, I would say that would sum it up. And uh, regarding the memory benefit, I I can't really say I subjectively feel it, and I haven't tested it, although I probably should uh, at some point. Um, but yeah, that, that would sum up my cognizant experience personally. Cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing. It. Do you drink coffee in combo um, with it, like I do, or do you? I. I used to drink coffee, but I no longer do. No, no, not okay. really. Interesting. Well, you almost don't have to. I mean, if, <laughs> it's it's really yeah. almost more of a ritual for me than it is a necessity, especially with cognizant. No, I understand that. It, like that, that's you know what I also hear from most people is that coffee is you know their morning ritual. So right. That's not, yeah, I get that. Well, I wanna I wanna talk a couple different points of view um, because. You know, if people are interested in checking this out, they're certainly going to go out and do do research. You've got a lot of good resources out on your on your website that we'll share with everybody in the show notes and blog. Um, when I was preparing for 
um, our chat, I wanted to just see if there's skeptical points of view out there. And of course there are with anything that's sort of new, um, you know, in, in science. So I, I wanted to share a couple of these. And I wanted to get your responses for So, yeah. So the first one is from Dr. Novella, Dr. Steve Novella. Um, a lot of people probably know him. He's a big contributor on sciencebasedmedicine.org. Uh, mm-hmm. He's a clinical neurologist at Yale. Um, and so he's, he said, and I'll share the link to this article in the show notes. He said that nootrop- nootropics um, that use stimulants like caffeine are good for creating. He says this, that they create the illusion of cognitive enhancement. He says mm. um, you can get these. Uh, and he says, if you, if, if you get enough sleep, if you get regular exercise, if you keep mentally active, if you don't skip meals and if you avoid alcohol and other drugs, that it's going to work better than any nootropic. Um, okay. So I, I want to hear your response to that and then I'll, I'll yeah. have something to share too. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, like uh, my response is going to be divided into two sections. The first section is regarding, uh, you know, the feeling of cognitive enhancement coming from the caffeine. So I definitely think there is some truth to that. And that's one of the reasons I got into this, because I would look at the, the formulas of these different commercial nootropics, and I would see the only thing with any effect in that formula is the caffeine. So there is some truth to that. And um, So that's a nice way of saying some of the other formulas are garbage. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it, it's, it's true. It's true. Like, like that's, you know, that was my personal uh, one, you know, one of the factors of my personal motivation to, to get to get into, you know, creating cognizant. Sure. But the thing is, like, um, now I'm going to put myself in a, in, a, in a precarious position here because I'm going to say that it doesn't apply to cognizant. And now, of course, that's what any business owner would say. So I'm going to I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to stop there because I want to demonstrate exactly why it doesn't. Um, so we've we've already been you know we've talked uh, uh, in detail about the different ingredients of cognizant, and I want to say that uh, you know out of the six main ingredients of cognizant, five of them have a very specific and significant subjective feeling besides caffeine, and that's what that, that that's what most of the other nootropics are lacking. So no other nootropics uses as as many adaptogens as we do. Or very few of them do, and the the you know these adaptogens they have a specific subjective feeling, and you can go you any one of you guys watch you know listening to this you can go to examine.com because that's just where you can see all the studies put in one place, and you can see this the the specific subjective effects and feelings it gives you, and um, you, you know you can check it for yourselves. So you know I'm gonna just briefly mention this again, Rhodiola rosea does increase subjective well-being in, in the studies and it, it does it also does increase uh you know like it, it eliminates fatigue uh and imp- uh, it preserves mental pro- mental performance under uh conditions of, of extreme tiredness or fatigue so that's that has a subjective feeling uh you, you know it's not just on paper it has a subjective feeling same thing with ginseng, the energy, the long-lasting smooth energy, has a subjective feeling. Same thing with ashwagandha, the anti-stress or anti-anxiety herb, that has a subjective feeling. So that's why I would say, that, you know, the Dr. Uh, Dr. Stevens' remarks don't apply to cognizant because there are quite a few different uh, nuanced, nuanced and, and significant and specific feelings which come from the the. Uh, you know, the effect of different ingredients inside cognizant. Does that make sense, Paul? It, it, it does. And, and my response to Dr. Novella's comments, he says, if you get these, it's better than any smart drugs, sleep, exercise, mentally active, don't skip meals and avoid yeah. alcohol. Well, if you ignore my couple of glasses of red wine on occasion, I tick all of those boxes really well. Um, and that's no joke. And I saw a dramatic difference when I used Cognizant versus just coffee, you know, and I talked about the, the sort of smooth energy. So, and fine, if it's placebo, uh, my friend Pete Smith says, I'll, I placebo the heck out of myself and I love it. You know I mean? That's fine. Placebo is great. Yeah. And I don't no. think it is, honestly, I, I really do think it's, it's a, it's a real thing that's, that's, you know, biochemically happening in the body, but uh, that sort of shoots down his point there. Um, 
you know, yeah. if I was really that's weak it. in all those areas and I was taking it and, and feeling energy, that's, that's fine. But I'm really well, uh, doing a really good job on all those areas and still felt a, a pretty big difference. That, that's awesome, Paul. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll be using that your testimonial somewhere now. <laughs> that's fine. I, 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 like I said, I, I really, one of the things that I said early on with, with this show is that, you know, we can talk about products, but I'm going to, I'm going to vet yeah. them myself and try them out myself. And if I don't believe in it, we're, you know, we're going to be yeah. honest about that on the show. So. Oh, um, for sure. Totally. But to, 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 you know, to answer the section part, like the second section, the part about getting enough sleep, exercising, um, you know, doing the basics. I don't know because I know you went over, uh, you know, my, our blog uh, section. Yes. So I don't know if you read it in some articles. I actually say that, um, you know, get the basics first, like getting enough sleep, exercising, eating well. Those are prior to cognizant. Like it's, it's not that I want, you know, yeah, cognizant is going to be good for you, but I would actually, I would really prefer that you get the basics first, you know, like build the, build the, the, the strong and stable and proper foundation and then go take it a step further with cognizant. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. I mean, you're, you don't want to be trying to make this as some magic pill that's, you know, if somebody's really, really far behind in all these other you know, necessary areas that it's going to fix everything for them. And I like that you're promoting it as a, an added benefit on top of the really important wellness balance pieces. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, uh, like, you know, it's, it's also part of our mission statement that we want to help people be, be at their best. So it's not like, you know, we want to, to sell you whatever we can sell you. Like, um, and, and like, we actually want you to be the best that you can be, you know, get, live the best life that you can live, achieve the most that you can achieve. And it's not just because, uh, we, we really want to help people that way. We really like, we yeah, of, of course we really do want to, but it, it's also really useful for our brand that we be like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. One more quick uh, skeptic that I want to talk about talks about uh, nootropics in a little different way. I want to hear your response to this too. Um, so this mm-hmm. was a 2017 article uh, in WashingtonPost.com. Um, Raleigh Durazme, Duraswami, excuse me. Um, who has done some, uh, led some clinical trials uh, at Duke University Health System and um, said that there was no evidence of what are commonly known as smart drugs of any type improving thinking or productivity over the long run. He said there's a sizable demand, but the hype around uh, efficacy far exceeds available evidence. Um, this was the quote that I wanted you to respond to specifically because I think this yeah. is interesting and I don't know enough about it to to, to make it any sort of inference, um, said well, it's a zero sum game. That's because would, when you, uh, open up one circuit in the brain, you're impairing another system. What do you think that he means by that? I, I would actually agree with him, but the, the, but because I, he's actually referring to a very specific, uh, subclass of nootropics. What is meant by smart when, 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 you know, when they, when someone says smart drugs, uh, what they're referring to is the paracetams, the modafinil, and, and the adderalls. Well, oh. probably not that broad because that's actual medicine. But usually it's the modafinil and the and the paracetams. And they, uh, they you know, unlike adaptogens who have like a multi-layered and, and more general uh, like effect, these smart drugs have a very specific mode of action. For example, modafinil is a wakefulness agent. Uh, it was originally uh, designed for n- narcolepsy, I think, you know, uh, to, to keep to keep patients awake. So they have a very specific mode of action, and and that's what that, well, that's what is usually called smart drugs, unlike neutro- you know, natural nootropics, which is the other herbs and and uh, ingredients. So yeah, I mean, like I personally don't take any smart drugs because I don't. Paracetams, modafinil, these these. Drugs have only been around for I don't know how many decades, but they're they're very new, and I'm not taking any of them until I see the long term research on it. Gotcha. Okay, so so thank you for helping make that clear. So we're talking about really two different things here. A nootropic is different than your um, paracetam. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, from, from the smart drugs, which usually includes like the, the you know the, there's a very there's a large group of different paracetams. There's like Piracetam, phenyl piracetam, uh, any racetam, you know, it's oxyracetam. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very wide range of, of different, um, like, 
chemically created or yeah like chemically created uh, smart drugs as they're called i see okay and so this concern with paracetam and some of the other smart drugs where they're they're opening up one circuit in the brain so maybe like wakefulness like you were talking about yeah it, yeah. it could be impairing another system so since it's a synthetic form uh, that hasn't been studied very well. That could very well be a possibility, but just to be clear, this isn't like a nootropic like cognizant. It's a different type of cognitive enhancement. Exactly. Yeah. That's okay. the, the, like, it, it would, it, I, like I suspect those smart drugs create imbalances and that's why I don't, you know, I've never tried it myself and I will not be trying it in the foreseeable future. future. Right. Um, and also, yeah, the uh, cognizant is, is like, uh, is a natural nootropic blend. So, we only use natural nootropics, you know, like herbal nootropics. We, there are no smart drugs in it whatsoever. So, so yeah, thank you for responding to those sort of counterpoints of view. And I think you made it clear, you know, why Cognizant is in both cases is different. Um, and you know, I came a couple across a couple of studies. You've got some really good research, uh, on your website, which I encourage people to check out. There's a couple of extra ones that I found. I don't think they're on your site. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, mm. but I thought these were interesting. They're specifically talking about, um, L-theanine and L-theanine combined with caffeine. So the mm. first one is in uh, biological psychology. It's a 2007 study. Um, and it found that L-theanine reduced, uh, psychological and physiological stress responses. And mm. then a 2014 study in the journal of nutrition review. Uh, this is, this is a systematic review of 11 different studies found that when you combined caffeine with L-theanine, you get the alertness. Uh, task switching and attention of individuals when you combine the two, which as we spoke of earlier, are two of your key ingredients that are in uh, Cognizant. Yeah. So, so good job combining those two. Thank you. Uh, but I thought um, I spoke earlier about how I had the smooth energy without jitters that I get with coffee sometimes. And it, and I really liked the combination of ingredients and I feel like I understand it better after you explained it. And I, I, maybe you're searching for this now, but I don't think there's any studies out there other than sort of our anecdotal sharing on the exact combination of what you have with caffeine, L-theanine, red ginseng, ginkgo biloba, or panicked mm -hmm. ginseng and red ginseng are the same thing. Um, yeah. Ashwagandha and the radiola rosea. Is, is there anything you're aware of that that uh, is studying that exact you know sweet combination that you have or something close? Uh, no, no, unfortunately not. No, if if there was, then I'm, then the, you know someone would have created cognizant before we did. But no, not not that uh, I know right. of. Um, I have I have looked into human trials my, myself. You know, me me and Greg when we were like looking for further, uh, you know, uh, how we could demonstrate the quality uh, of cognizant better. But like live human trials cost millions and millions of of dollars. It's just completely unrealistic. At least you know on our scale so far um we might in the future consider like in vitro trials which is like uh testing the combination on on cells outside the human body like in a lab and that's that's much more uh manageable and and uh it it, it might it, it's not as accurate but that's that's one option we're looking into but no to answer your question there are no tests on the combination uh, as a whole Gotcha. Yep. But but to be clear, there are many, many studies on all of the ingredients that are in Cognizant, just to make yes. sure people understand that. And some some in combination, like the Jinko and the the ginseng or the caffeine and alpha anine. So it's like different permutations within Cognizant, yeah. Yeah. Like you said, if the if Cognizant had been created, there'd be studies out there on it already. Nobody yeah. was nobody was as smart as you to come up with it though. That's the problem. Well, <laughs> I I really don't think it's actually not complicated at all to do what we did, which is why I jumped into it, like uh, because I could see that, you know, this is something so simple. And yet, maybe this industry is so new that no one, you know, came up with something so, so you know, simple to, to, to make because it's not complicated at all. So, so yeah, maybe it's the, the novelty of the, of the whole industry. I don't know. Well, that, that's actually a nice segue to my next question about sort of the supplement industry and, and how you got everything started. So I don't think you give yourself enough credit. I think you all did a really good job with, with your research and <laughs> you. your knowledge base. But 
you know, as most of us know, supplements are largely unregulated. Um, yeah. and, and I bet, I think if it was me and I bet you're the same way, you, you really kind of wish it was because you guys are doing it right. You know, you're, you're making sure that the ingredients are good quality, that they're safe. Um, you want people to be successful and healthy. You're not trying to turn a buck. And so it, it seems to me that you probably are somebody that wishes that we had, you know, you know, the FDA regulating supplements uh, so you could certify their, their safety and effectiveness a little bit better. Yeah, we, we totally do. And uh, I would say there are two two main reasons for that. One is customers and consumers in general would trust us more if they knew this product was regulated and approved. Like, I mean, like, like uh, in terms of like bottom line, like, like sales would dramatically increase if, if people had complete trust in, in, in the, let's, let's say, safety of the product. You know? Absolutely, and, yes. And, purity. Uh, and also the second reason is, all, which is, quite you know it's it's on almost on like the, the same note which is that our stakeholders would have more trust in us for example one thing we really really struggled with and was close to decimating our business before it began and which has actually uh, succeeded in decimating many many other supplement businesses is um g- getting a payment system in place and that's because uh payment uh gateways or payment systems do not trust supplements why it's not because they're bad but because supplements are not regulated and these payment gateways don't are not willing to place enough resources to check companies on a case-by-case basis and this by the way the, 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 like i'm saying it online because i don't you know if someone can do it please do it i don't have the time or money to do it myself right now if you can create a payment gateway specifically for supplements you're gonna be a very rich man wow wow That's i had no business. idea because this is a problem I faced and I've talked to many, you know, many other supplement, you know, we, we supplement business owners talk to, to, to each other and uh, we all have the same problem. We, we don't, you know, we, you know, like I, I would say like only five to 10% of us can actually take credit cards. The 90% of us are always trying to do it. And even the 10% of, of us that do have credit card systems always feel uh, you know, they always feel they're in a precarious position and that the blanket can be pulled from under their feet any moment. Wow. So if anyone has the resources to do it or the, the IT, uh, you know, IT experience, because I don't have a code or background, uh, Paul, probably, I don't mind having my, my email uh, on, on the show notes. So please feel free to get in touch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll definitely include your contact information. Awesome. So, Okay. So you mentioned uh, to me as I was talking about taking Cognizant before my workouts and sort of feeling some some good benefit from it, lower heart rate and sort of steady energy, um, mm. and my own nervousness, which was usually self imposed. <laughs> I've got some crazy stuff going on in my head all the time, especially when I exercise. But anyways, mm. you had mentioned that you uh, you have a pre workout supplement. I think that's what you were terming mm. it as. Well. Yeah, I mean, I would I wouldn't really call it a pre workout. It can it can definitely be used as a pre workout, so it can cognizant. But um, I mean, I probably put it that way just because it it, it uh, it's more explosive than cognizant. I would say. Okay. So so cogni up. Uh, so funny enough, cogni up our future product is also for energy, focus, mood, and memory. So it's, it's the it, it ticks the same boxes as cognizant. But the difference is that in the short term, Cogni Up is more explosive. It's more energy boosting. And if you're prone to it, it's more likely to give you anxiety, Cogni Up. So it's it's a bit more hardcore, basically. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, it's like uh, Cogni, Cognizant on steroids. Well, I probably shouldn't say that about a supplement, though. <laughs> uh, well, it's... Uh, hold on. But it, it, it actually, for now, it doesn't have more caffeine than cognizant, but it's just the mechanism is much more unhinged, basically. Cool, cool. Um, when do you guys think you're going to try to push that into public? Maybe, I think, I'd say we're like maybe a month or f- five weeks away from it. I actually went to Biohacker Summit in, in Estonia in mid-September, and uh, that was part of my experimentation phase. So I gave it to the whole summit. It's like 50 or 70 people take who t- took Cogni up, sorry, and they totally loved it. Like they absolutely loved it. So the, the, the results have been overwhelmingly positive. 
you know, the, the research is done, the formula is ready. And I, I'm just, I have it actually available on pre-order if, if anyone is interested. Um, and yeah, like I'd, I'd say maybe in like a month and a bit, it should be out. Okay, great. Oh, actually, and, and the, in, the, in the long term, so the main difference is in the short term, Cogni app is more explosive. And in the long term, Cognizant is better at stress resilience, whereas Cogni app is better at, at mood lifting in the long term. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, so maybe you could, you know, you could operate with, with both. Like one of the things I was thinking about with, with Cognizant is yeah. that I could even use it, you know, part time, like use it um, when I'm working on a big project for like a week and then maybe go off of it for a while and then go back on it. Um, although I guess you probably wouldn't get sort of the long term benefits uh, like memory if you went on and off of it. What do you think about yeah, that? You would, you, you would get the other three. I mean, the stress resilience uh, and, and mood uh, benefit would take like two days or three days, maybe, you know, to build up. But you'd get most of the benefits. But yeah, would you would not get the memory benefit. But that, that's that's OK, because like I said, you know, a 7.5 percent memory boost is not something very major. But it sounds like you could even, you know, use Cognizant for certain types of things that you're going through or anticipate that you're going to go through. And then the Cogni up again, if you're, you know, preparing for an event or something like that, that I think there'd be different situations where both of them might be, um, mm, might be helpful. Yeah, yeah but actually uh, I would, I would not recommend using Cogni up and Cognizant concurrently. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good um, to be clear on that. And, and I'll explain why actually. And and the thing is also with, with Cogni up, most likely you have to experiment to know for yourself, but with Cogni up, most likely you have to quit coffee completely. Oh, wow. That powerful. Because well, it's, it's not really about the power. It's about the mechan one of the mechanisms of action. So, you, you know, Cognizant uses caffeine as caffeine and combines it with L-theanine and, and, you know, has a bit of synergy with, with Jensen. Okay, so that's, 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 all, what, that's uh, all the caffeine stuff when it comes to Cognizant. With Cognizant, it's actually different. So it's using the same amount of caffeine, but it is... Uh, dramatically intensifying it and making it longer lasting. So Cognizant relies more on caffeine than Cognizant. Um, what it does is uh, in Cognizant, the caffeine is made to be more powerful and last longer. Cool, cool. Well, yeah. I've, I'll definitely check it out whenever you get it uh, going. The, the, we'll, we'll talk about it some more. Is, the, the, the thing is that it would also apply to, to external caffeine you take. So if you, you know, you, if you take Cogni up and then let's say in a few hours, I, I mean, maybe it, it would need like to be a four hour gap for, 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 for it to be like completely, uh, you know, for there to be no interference whatsoever. But let's say you take Cogni up and then in an hour you take coffee. The coffee you took, you know, an hour after Cogni up is also going to be intensified. Wow. Wow. So that's the thing with Cogni up. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I, I thought it would be like great for elite athletes because it would be. Uh, well, first of all, it's totally legal, and all all the ingredients you know are are safe, and you you know no one's gonna accuse you of doping. Yet at the same time, it's it's quite hardcore, and it, it's both you know it boosts your both it boosts you both phys physically and mentally. So I just, and I don't know, in my mind, I have, I have this idea that Cogniap would be really suitable for some elite athletes. Like I'm thinking Formula One, um, like, uh, I don't know, basketball, tennis. Um, funny enough, I, like actually, we, I did give um, Mick, Mick Schumacher, Michael's son. He, he has, he, I think he's trying, I did, his coach was in Estonia, so I gave him a bottle of Cogni up to try and I think he tried it I'm pretty sure but I just I just I don't want to you know I'm waiting for a few more weeks to pass before I, I check on him and ask how, how it was but um, yeah like that that's the kind of, of situation where I think Cogni up would be useful as Cognizant I would think of it more as a as a student uh, uh, or like um, you know a professional entrepreneur uh, yeah, yeah like like okay, in my mind, Cogni up is for for people who want to be hit with a brick. <laughs> yes, I can appreciate that. Well, like, like the race car driver, that's a good uh, that's a good example, though. I mean, for people that don't yeah. know, that's a very very physically and mentally demanding sport. I mean, you're going in the Indy cars, you're going you know over 200 miles per hour. 
you cannot make a mental mistake or else you're toast. So, and, and you know, these people, they lose like sometimes up to 10 pounds in one race, which yes. is crazy. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, they drink Red Bull before the race, like, you know, like, like screw the Red Bull. Why don't you have something much better? Like Red Bull is just caffeine here. Have, have something which gonna, you know, something more potent. And, and it'll keep you calmer too. Right. I mean, that's, you're going to be able to keep your nerves calmed better with, with, yeah, well, um, I mean, that would be more with Cognizant, although Cognizant also has 300 milligram of L-theanine. So I, I haven't had anyone complaining. Cognizant is making them nervous. And that's actually, that was comforting for me because I did originally anticipate that quite quite a, you know, a decent portion of people who try Cognizant will be nervous, but that has not been the case at all. So probably the L-theanine is really doing its job very well because, you know, the usual dose is 200 milligram. But in both Cognizant and Cognizant, I use 300 milligrams. So it seems that uh, people are not getting nervous with Cognizant, which is uh, something I anticipated and it was fine with, with. Because, you know, the way I describe Cognizant is, is, is it's designed to be explosive. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Very cool, yeah. Uh, I'll be sure to send you a bottle when they're out. Yeah, yeah, I'll be excited sure. to, to try it. We'll have to talk about it after I, I check it out. Totally. While we're on supplements, uh, I don't want to keep you too much longer. I've had you for a long time. Just a couple more questions. Um, so I'm one of these guys that started taking uh, creatine monohydrate when it first came out in the late 90s. Um, yeah. And I was, this is when I didn't do my research. I just took it because I heard it was a good supplement. And, and, you know, of course, nowadays it's probably, you know, the most or one of the most studied uh, supplements of all time and, you know, keeps coming back as a, as a very safe supplement to take. But the reason I bring it up with you, um, is because it's been shown to have some cognitive function benefits. Um, just a couple of quick studies I'll share study in the uh, British journal, British journal of nutrition in 2011 show that results uh, included better memory for vegetarians and reaction time tasks, irrespective of diet. So, uh, reaction yeah. time was better no matter how you ate. And then the vegetarian piece for me, I think is important because I'm actually, I've been eating plant-based for five years and, um, I'm aware of, you know, creatine only being found in meat. So that's nice to see that, um, supplementing it can help with, with some cognitive function are, there. Are, are you vegetarian? Paul? Yeah. Well, um, I'm actually, uh, technically a plant-based, so no animal products at all um, for, for the last five years, it's been really the good. For, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, see the V I I'm careful with the V V word with vegan, because some, some people that, uh, from a food perspective, plant-based and vegan means the exact same thing. It basically means new animal, no animal products, but I'm careful yeah. to use that term for myself because I still have leather shoes and, you know, there's, I have other, you know, like leather wallet and that kind of stuff. And so some folks that are, are really, I guess you could say hardcore vegans may take, um, yeah. um, you know, they might have a problem with, with me saying yeah. vegan. So that's why I'm careful with that. Oh, there's another study too, uh, experimental gerontology, uh, in 2018, this year, uh, showed better memory in, in healthy, in healthy adults, um, mm. with, with creatine. So anyway, I just wanted to know if creatine is something you've ever supplemented with since you're really into cognitive function. I've wondered if it's something you've ever checked out. Hmm. Well, um, you might, you might disagree with me on this, but, um, I don't think creatine, I mean, I know it's been studied and I know it's safe, but I think it's very easy to abuse creatine and screw yourself up. And to, to me, like that's, I mean, maybe that that's probably, probably gives consumers even more trust in, in cognizant, but I'm, uh, my risk uh, profile is not high enough to use creatine. Basically, I've used it before quite a bit because I'm into weightlifting as well, or like, you know, but, but like resistance training. So I've used it and I can attest at least to the physical component that, yeah, my power increased by 20% when I used it easily. And um, I would totally believe the, the mental benefits it provides. But I mean, man, I really don't want to screw, you know, don't want to mess with my kidneys. And it's just the, the way you know the, like i mean i know it like i said i know it's relatively safe when well, quite safe but i just uh, i mean i look at how it affects the way my body uses water and man like i, I really don't want to mess with my kidneys so i personally personally and i know it's just me it's not that I'm, I'm not saying it's bad but i do not want to use 
like I don't use creatine and I but because I've pretty much like my philosophy behind Cognizant is was creating the product I would use myself. I did not include it in, in Cognizant either. Yep. That, that was actually my next question is uh, if you were using it, if, if it was something you would consider adding to it to sort of have a, a super supplement, but that makes total sense um, why you would, why you would avoid it. And, you know, just yeah, like, anecdotally, I, you know, when I take creatine, even just yeah. within an hour after taking it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're noticing um, your body's, uh, building up water for for sure yeah and like like i know the power output like you can live i can lift quite i used I, I remember clearly you know i tested it and i was aware of it i could lift significantly more when i was on creatine but like i see that you know you have to be really careful to, and make sure you drink a lot of water because you get more you get dehydrated quicker and and you know uh you like yeah yeah like the dehydration rate goes up when you're on creatine and and uh you know the creatinine in, in like in your kidneys increase like i don't know man it's just i think it's it's way too delicate that mechanism that i would i would think like the potential for me the potential harm outweighs the benefits for me yeah, no that's i i appreciate that point of view and that's that's good for folks that you know either take creatine like myself or that are thinking about it to to make sure that yeah. they take you know, weigh that as part of their overall, you know, research in it. That's good. I appreciate that. But for, for, for the part about your diet, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not the same, but I'm, I'm, I would say closer to you than, than, you know, normal or like the, the average person. I'm a pescatarian myself. Oh, and, great. Uh, like, and the reason I chose pescatarian wasn't because of any philosophy. Like I would have went vegan or vegetarian myself. But this, I like I, I literally brought out a pen and paper and opened a calculator and did the math and I, I came up with the result that if I if I'm a pescatarian, I would still be getting all my nutrients and vitamins and minerals without any problem. Like if I go any degree less, if I go to vegetarian or vegan, then I would probably have to extensively supplement. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to, when it came to diet, I wanted to be as natural as possible. So I, I went with pescatarian. Yeah. And I would, I would have to concur with that. Um, you know, pescatarian allows you to eat fish, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, exactly. That's it. And fish, so fish. you're not, you're not having to supplement the, the B12 or the, uh, like omega threes, like a lot of uh, vegans like myself yeah. have to so, supplement. Yeah. So I I don't have to supplement omega threes or B twelve or zinc or calcium, and probably I would say B three is is a bit heavy on the on the meaty side as well. Vitamin B three. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, I've heard that too. Definitely. But uh, the, but tell me, like, so so you've been supplementing B twelve for four years and it's worked perfectly for you yeah no issues whatsoever no no issues at all in fact uh my b12 is is better now <laughs> i took my blood yeah. um right before i switched just because i wanted to watch everything really closely uh yeah and yeah. the blood work year over year sh shows really good b12 levels i'm taking a thousand micrograms every day just uh sublingual day. supplements okay, so. okay. Got it. Well, that, that's quite a bit okay yeah it, you know i guess it's uh i really like what you're doing there too i mean i think if you, at least the standard American diet, the, one of the yeah. best things you can do is just eat more fruits and vegetables. I mean, that's, that's critical, you know, over half of your plate in, in fruits and vegetables. And, you know, you can argue back and forth on, you know, what's the absolute best diet, but you know, our microbiome yeah. is, is like a fingerprint and everybody digests food differently and responds differently to different foods. So <clears throat> I yeah. just try to share as many different types of things as I can um, so that people can make the best choice for themselves. And I appreciate, There's, you know, different things work for different folks. The, if, if you're interested, actually, I, I have this breakfast shake on my blog. And I think this shake, well, it's useful for anyone who would like to try it, but it's especially useful for vegans and vegetarians or like plant-based uh, diets as well, if, 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 you, if you look into it. Because uh, like it contains pumpkin seeds, which are extremely rich in zinc. And uh, well, magnesium is not a problem on plant-based, but... Um, Pumpkin seeds are extremely rich in zinc and iron, and the cacao has quite a bit of iron in it as well. Uh, what else I use? Yeah, I've got almonds, which also have a bit of iron, and so it's so it's it's quite heavy on some stuff which are missing in 
in, in plant-based diets. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll link to it in the, the show notes and check it out. It'll be the fierce, fabulous smoothie. <laughs> like half an hour before we, we went, uh, we started the call. Nice. That's cool. Um, Okay, two more questions, and we'll let you go. I've had you for an hour and a half here. No, so no, I'll be fun. Don't, don't worry about me. Okay. Like, that's the thing about being an entrepreneur. You know, you, your time is yours. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so just in researching nootropics, it seems like, and maybe I'm actually sort of mixing the line between nootropic and smart drug. You helped me sort of define those earlier. But um, mm. it seemed like university students are, um, are big into – nootropics. Um, but again, that might be more like the Adderall and the, and the smart drugs. Yep. What would you guess is, is your biggest demographic for Cognizant and then just sort of nootropics in general? So, yeah, I agree that most university students are actually using the, the smart drugs, um, which is, you know, which includes, of course, Adderall and Ritalin or Concerta, uh, you know, diff- different names, but they, they work similarly. Like they, 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 it's like they're like some kind of, methamph- you know, methamphetamine derivative. Um, that's that's the most widely used one. And of course, modafinil and Brostems are used as well. But uh, in terms of demographics, I definitely see university students as as. Part of the thing is that we don't have a very specific target, and I'm trying to build one depending on like like I'm trying to build one through my customers, but I realize that they're quite varied. So um, some are nootropics enthusiasts who just like the blend, and uh, like basically the blend is similar to what they would have designed for themselves. I have a few of those, and I've got a few people who I would say are actually like you and me, like uh, they you know they have. Uh, plan for their life they've got a vision and they're trying to achieve the best that they can achieve and contribute to, to as much as they can to uh, uh to the world to put it in a very like general context but and they also work out extensively so i have a few of those as well who use it i've got um and I, i've got a few professionals who use it as well as part, they make it part of their daily routine uh, you know, they they do what you do, basically. They have cookies and then in a few hours or a couple of hours, they have their coffee or other way around. Um, so I can't really, and um, I mean, I, I can't really pin it down because it, it's, it, can, it has such a wide variety of, uh, you know, uh, like applications. Like I know, for example, some of the tropics specifically target gamers because they, they, well, they want all the brain power they can get. Really? Uh, oh my gosh, I had yeah, no idea. Yeah, no, they're, they're, Quite a few, I think. Like even the name is um, applies something related to games. So the, the application and the audience is is too wide, and I haven't really like in my mind right now. I would say if I want to divide it to two main odd target audiences, it would be like you know young uh, professionals who want to optimize their life uh, because you know they want to achieve the best that they can achieve, and of course university students. But I would personally identify more with with the you know, the professionals and entrepreneurs who basically self-optimize so so they can do their best, I think. Yeah, that's that's great. I was just thinking while you were talking about that, you know, I wish I would have had something like this. Um, when I was a university student, I mean, I didn't even yeah. really drink coffee back in those days. I think wow. maybe um, I would have, I think Rockstar <laughs> was just hitting the market and of course Red Bull was out. So I think I would occasionally have one of those when I was trying to, study and, you know, you know, pull mm-hmm. all nighter or late night studying, but man, it would have been so nice to have something more like uh cognizant to, you know, enhance focus. And, you know, because I always struggled with, Definitely. I would, I would do really well with studying, but man, when it came time to really put in like two or three hours, I had a hard time staying focused. I think this would have, would have been helpful. Okay. Well, th- well, that means you've done you know, to go from that to the way you described your routine, I think you did a, a really, you know, like you did a great job in the transformation, Paul. So well done because <laughs> I, I, I can picture it because I was like myself when I was young as well, you know, and now I'm, I'm highly conscientious, which is, you know, the opposite of, of how probably we both were when we were in, in our uni days. Yes. Yes. We are we're, uh, older and wiser men now, aren't we, Ferris? Yes. <laughs> One last question for you. Um, yeah. It seems like you're a pretty well balanced guy. This is a question I ask all of my guests because I think we can learn something from everybody, and uh, everybody yeah. sort of has their own personal 
biohacks, if you will, on what works for them. So yeah. you, you talked a little bit earlier about, you know, meditation and your process with that. What are some of the other things that you personally use to help find your own wellness balance? Well, I really, I think I do everything I can. So like I eat very, uh, like I, I never eat refined sugars and I, and like what I eat is, is literally measured on, on paper, you know, like, like how it would help me and what, what nutrients, uh, uh, you know, I'm missing out and how, how I make sure I don't miss out on them. So I, I eat really well. I exercise religiously. Um, you know, I, I have like i use product you know i'm I'm quite productive and organized as well as as you are um but so, so i do all all the you know all the textbook <laughs> i follow the textbook quite well when it comes to like biohacking and, and staying on top of things but like i said i think the the most important and and useful thing for me has been the ability to um you know to be me zen at all times or at least most of the time i think that that's the big thing because when, when you're like that you become like can you imagine you hope like your entire brain power focused on what you're doing and like no okay so you're like more productive more capable more more yeah, you know even more intuitive or like more creative and and just like very um like you like yeah you can take on anything when 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 you're able to to be like that you know like you, it's very hard for you to get overwhelmed I used to get overwhelmed back when I was younger. Well, I did I, when I didn't have that ability. The, I, the, I think that's really, really good advice because, you know, in Western society, we just, what we need more of is what we don't want to do, which is get ourselves into a parasympathetic state. Well, how do we do yeah. that? We slow down yeah. for a little bit. You meditate, you know, you do a hot sauna and you, yeah. you know, do a zone two easy cardiovascular workout, all the things that we don't want to do. We want to, we want to do, or like yoga is a good example, but we want to do like the super intense yoga and we want to do like, uh, yeah. you know, all yeah. these, we don't want to do the the things that we really should do to slow down. Yeah, well, and... it's, 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 a, it's a very type A culture, but I would say that uh, like for, for those people who are listening to this, who are very type A, that that's fine. You know, like I'm type A too, and I'm pretty sure Paul is as well. Yes. But it's it's not it's it's not an antidote or like it's not a it's not a type A depressant this whole and stuff like if you read the book Relentless which is by Tim Grover and this guy is basically the coach and guru of uh, superstar athletes like Michael Jordan Kobe Bryant Charles Barkley uh, and, you know like those are probably Tom Brady what's the the quarterback guy like many of the top superstars in in, in North America and and the U S in general. Like the most, like the thing he focuses on the most in his book, which is all about killer instinct and achieving the best that you can achieve, and you know going above and you know you know continuously pushing to achieve and achieve and achieve more and more and more, never being satisfied. So, which is you know what resonates with Type A people. The thing he focuses most about, uh, focuses the most on in his book is the ability to go into the zone, and the zone is the place where you're completely where you're able to completely block out everything and focus on what you have to do. You know, we, the, the zone, like he has a saying in his book, you know, he says when he, he's talking to his athletes, he says, when the room, like when the hall, what are we like, okay, when the place gets uh, brighter and hotter, I want you to be to become darker and cooler. And like he doesn't really talk, he doesn't even mention uh, meditation or Zen or yoga, but th that's really what he's referring to. Like the zone is the place where you just you, you stop thinking about irrelevant stuff you just you know you block everything out you focus on what you have to do and like like, like no distractions and you, you just flow so so it, uh, the whole the point of all what i'm saying is that this is not you know zen or, or like whatever word you want to use to describe it is not a, a hindrance for achievement and for, for for being the best that you can be or like like being productive yeah, that's really good advice. It's it's only going to help. It really is. And yeah. So, yeah. It's like, um, uh, this probably isn't a very good example, but it came to mind. So, you know, it's like trying to convince um, people or companies to allow their employees to maybe exercise at lunch. Well, hmm. you know, intuitively you're thinking, 
uh, oh man, they're going to be away for an hour at lunch to exercise. That means lower productivity. But in reality, mm. it's been shown in research that if you allow uh, the employee time to take a break from work and exercise, they actually come back and they are much more productive. Even if they worked the whole time through, if they have that break, it's, it's, I guess I'm just trying yeah. to speak to the point of, you know, taking time to, you know, to slow down and, and focus and move away is actually going to make you more productive in the end. Yeah. Like I remember I was, I was an intern at LinkedIn for, for like a few months in London and mindfulness, you know, she's another word for Zen is a really, really big deal there. And even like the, everyone from the CEO down practiced it. And they had like sometimes a week long workshop just on, on, on how to be mindful. And at Google, I know that you get take 20%, 20% of your time off to do any side project or free flow and, and brainstorm about other ideas. So, so it's actually already used in, in like, you know, uh, like the, 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 the companies and corporations at the cutting edge of innovation. Yeah. They, they understand that, you know, yeah. giving them a little bit of space is actually going to help them be more productive and creative at their job. <laughs> That's good.